Flatliners is a fascinating science fiction horror movie that was directed by Joel Schumacher. Yep, that Joel Schumacher. But this was seven years before Batman and Robin, so we don't have to judge him for that failure yet. So we'll just forget about this little disaster for the rest of the video. Good thing I didn't mention it. Right, where was I? Oh yeah, Flatliners is a movie that was directed by someone who could do no wrong in 1990, and it was a very interesting concept for a science fiction horror film. And just recently, Sony decided to grace it with a remake, and today we are going to compare the two and see which one is superior. Let the battle commence. The story for Flatliners is that a medical student played by Kiefer Sutherland wants to experience life after death after hearing numerous stories of near-death experiences from a variety of different hospital patients. He gets his friends involved, and they each try to accomplish this by taking turns stopping each other's heartbeat for a short period of time, essentially killing themselves. And in their downtime, they get to see a brief look at the afterlife. However, once they get their heartbeats going again and they come back to life, they start to notice strange sightings and disturbing imagery, which they very quickly realise are more than just hallucinations, and can do some serious harm to each of them in a variety of different ways. And in the remake, it's the exact same story. There were absolutely no additions that were made to the original narrative. So again, this is another case where in order to determine which movie has the superior story, we need to take a look at the execution. So the presentation style and execution of the 1990 movie is slow, dull, and unusually quiet. And consequentially, this really makes the film drag, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this puts people to sleep. Not to mention, the movie is so boring to look at with its constant use of dissimilar shades of brown. When it isn't filling the screen with browns, it finds a way to incorporate different levels of blue. And when it doesn't want to use either of those, it will occasionally switch to green. Very rarely will it switch to an organic colour palette. But strangely enough, you do get used to this aesthetic after a while, and more than anything, it actually adds to the uncomfortable nature of the situation our characters are going through. So from that perspective, it actually benefits the film in its own strange way. As for the visual style of the remake, it is so conventional and so boring to look at that unlike the original movie, you actually want to refrain from looking at the screen and look at your phone or something. Anything. Also, the tone is so dull, unexciting, and it feels like it's just going through the narrative phases of the original film, but it completely lacks the relevance and purpose. And that really is a shame, because the story for the remake really could have been far more interesting and unpredictable if it turned out to be a sequel. Kiefer Sutherland is actually in this movie, and if he turned out to be his character from the original film, then this could have opened up plenty of interesting prospects and new narrative possibilities. But nope, he is only here for a couple of completely pointless cameos. And I could have sworn that for the longest time, it was said that Kiefer Sutherland was going to play his character from the original movie and not just an extra. And I feel that Sutherland himself genuinely felt like he was appearing in a sequel because he implied in various written interviews that this was less of a remake and more of a sequel. But nope, I can tell you with 100% conviction that this is most certainly a remake. And the story unfolds in such a poor, incoherent fashion, and as a result, it severely lacks any competence that is required for even a basic story. So the movie with a superior story is undoubtedly the 1990 movie. Is there even a point in comparing the cast in the remake? Here are some of the names we have in the original movie. Kiefer Sutherland, Julia Roberts, and the best of all, Kevin Bacon. In the remake, on the other hand, we have Nina Dobrev, James Norton, Diego Luna, which is alright, and finally, Ellen Page. <laughs> we'll talk more about her later. So, what are the characters like in the original movie? Well, our main character is called Nelson, played by Kiefer Sutherland, and as a character, he started out good, and he got better as the movie's story continued to unfold. Everyone else was just adequate. They got more development as the movie went on, but I didn't find myself concerned for them too much. But out of all of them, Kevin Bacon was by far the best. He showcased the most emotion, and you can tell that he was giving his all to this role. But having said that, most of the characters were kind of stale for the first act of the movie. They aren't bad or anything, but they were just uninteresting. Now by the time the movie reaches its second act, that's when all of a sudden they become a lot more compelling, as they start to get haunted by imagery that revolves around their past. And that's when the dull tone becomes engulfed with a feeling of insecurity and helplessness, and the movie becomes much more captivating as a result. And it's at this point where we start to see the characters interact on a much more personal level, as they start to open up about their past mistakes. The only problem I find with this though, is that the stuff they are getting haunted by are low-level situations. If the circumstances from their past were linked to something more serious, then they could have dwelled on their history much more, and in turn, it would have led to more in-depth character development. So the characters' backstories definitely could have been a lot more, but for what they were, it was decent. And on a side note, Kiefer Sutherland's character can be pretty stupid. There is a scene where Kevin Bacon tells him, If anything happens, 
If you need me, you just talk the horn, all right? Okay. Well, he gets in trouble. The horn is right in front of him, but what does Sutherland do? Yeah, <sighs> smart. Going back to the remake, our main character is Ellen Page, and that immediately is this movie's biggest problem to me. Why the hell did they cast Ellen Page? She is an actress I downright cannot stand. Why? Well, aside from the fact that she is a very stiff performer, it is the monotone, moody expression she has on her face every time she is on screen that really bothers me. And she does this with every one of her performances, and the bored facial expressions along with her bland acting and delivery is where this movie severely suffers. Much like Kiefer Sutherland's version, she is meant to be the scientist who is full of intrigue and really wants to perform this experiment so badly that she's even willing to test it on herself. But she just acts bored the whole time. I seriously have a hard time believing that someone who is this emotionally detained is so keen to explore the afterlife. On the other side of the spectrum, when you take a look at Kiefer Sutherland, he was eager, passionate, and so desperate to give this mad experiment a try. And you could just feel the energy encapsulate everyone around him as he would so passionately discuss the scientific possibilities and outcomes. Ellen Page, however, just blurts it out with no conviction, and you can't take her seriously. She is also so emotionally lacking that she instantly becomes confident about attempting this never-before-trialed fatal experiment. Again, going back to Sutherland, he was eager to perform the experiment, but leading up to it, he was out of breath, sweaty, and incredibly nervous. He would be sure of himself, but he would also be afraid due to how unpredictable the whole procedure was. That was one of the many things that constantly added to the tension every single time he or anyone else would stop their heartbeat. In the remake, that tension is nowhere to be found, and a large part of that is down to Ellen Page's lackluster performance. Now, it's not all her fault, the rest of the cast in this remake are just as bad. They aren't characters, they are two-dimensional emotional stereotypes. They each just have their own individual reaction to hearing about the experiment, and on top of that, they are incredibly horny. Yup, that is a change the remake actually decided to incorporate. Observe, in the original movie, the group consists of four guys and one girl. The remake, however, has three girls and two guys, and this was done for no other reason than to get these characters to mingle. Because, you know, that's just what the remake needed to be better, didn't it? These characters drinking and screwing each other. What a freaking insult. Also, as well as being horny, these characters in one way or another have horrible character traits. In particular, with the way Kiersey Clemens, also known as Iris West in the DCEU, talks to her mother. It was so disrespectful, and the movie tried to portray it as a proud moment. If anything, it seems like a perfect metaphorical and literal parallel that showcases the dignity of the current generation in comparison to the last. Also, there comes a time for the characters in both movies where they apologise to the people they have wronged, and in the remake, they are apologising purely for selfish reasons and not because they genuinely feel bad for what they have done. And this not only makes them detestable, it makes them downright despicable. When you see them apologise in the original, you can tell they are wholeheartedly ashamed as they reflect on the events and recognise that they were completely in the wrong. Some show it in slightly unorthodox ways, but then we get Kevin Bacon's apology which was extremely upfront, genuine, and even heartfelt. You can tell that as well as helping himself, he is revisiting a time in his life that he isn't proud of and he has to face it head on. It was an integral bit of humanity that was really needed to further expand and develop these characters, but the remake didn't want any of it. It also does some downright weird stuff when it imitates the original. For example, 80% of Keith Sutherland's character arc was primarily given to Ellen Page. Fair enough. But then in the movie's climax, it gives his final 20% to a completely different character, and it concludes in a way where it makes you think this person was the one that the film was all about. I mean, what the hell is this? They took the original story, and instead of making it better or updated, they just scrambled it. So without a shadow of a doubt, the movie with the far superior characters and motivations is the original 1990 movie. Now the horror in both of these movies is really dependent on the hallucinations that the characters go through, and both choose to execute this differently. Whereas the original movie tries to take a more psychological approach, the remake just goes for the most basic form of modern horror. And yes, that does mean that it is filled to the rim with lame jump scares. Now at times, the scares do have an imaginative build-up, but they lack a proper payoff. And inexcusably, this makes the horror boring. 
Additionally, it is so unoriginal that it even copied from infinitely more effective horror films such as The Conjuring. Now, the horror in the original movie isn't necessarily scary, but it's done in a way where it's supposed to make you feel like the characters are falling in and out of a dream without even realizing. And it is very effective in accomplishing this as it gives you an uncomfortable feeling of isolation and to a certain extent, it does put you on edge and makes you feel concerned with the outcome of the visions, because ultimately, they are either going to end in an informative or violent manner. This gives the original a unique sense of tone and atmosphere, whereas the remake just feels as generic a modern day horror movie can be. So of the two films, the one with the superior horror is the 1990 movie. As far as science fiction goes, I personally think this story has quite a lot of potential and if tweaked enough, I am convinced that this could make for a pretty awesome movie. Unfortunately, the concept, although great, is not fully realized, and that is ultimately why I can't fully get on board with this story. So because of that, the superior movie really comes down to which one had the most entertainment factor and the superior execution. Visually, the 90s version does have some nice cinematography at times, and the utilization of its colors does look artistically interesting. But the remake... This is the very definition of Hollywood scraping the bottom of the barrel here. I mean seriously, I get why studios want to remake certain movies as there is potential to give them great modernized visual interpretations, but Flatliners... Flatliners! Giving this a remake isn't even worth it, and I'm pretty certain Sony felt the same way because they only released one trailer for this movie. There aren't even any official clips out there. That's the main reason you have been seeing the same footage throughout this review. Now the remake had so much other problems, but I didn't bring them up because if I did, we would be here all month. It's time for the scores. I can perfectly see why people would love the original movie. It all depends on how you feel about this overall style and execution of filmmaking. But for me, the 1990 Flatliners gets a below average 4 out of 10. And because of the unforgivable lack of creativity and the fact that it didn't do anything to justify its existence, the remake from Basic Principle has to get a 1 out of 10. Freaking Sony, man. They really are churning out a bunch of flops this year, aren't they? And the movie that got them the most praise wasn't even made by them. Good luck with your thoughtless and pointless R-rated Venom movie. I know you didn't decide to make it just because Deadpool and Logan were successful with their R ratings. Anyway, that's it for another episode. If you guys liked it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more Versus videos. Also, stay tuned as my next Versus video will be Blade Runner vs Blade Runner 2049. You will definitely want to know what I have to say about that. Thanks again for watching guys, and I will catch all of you next time. Take care.